Hello YouTubers, um, I recently got my Chromebook Pixel thanks to Google who uh, gave me a huge discount at Google I.O. to buy this and the first question I wanted to ask was can I have a development setup on this um, and so last week I uh, started setting up um, the Linux container and I just wanted to share my initial views on how it's been going so far. So um, I got this particular version of the Pixel Chromebook. It's the i5 with the 8 GB RAM. So this should be sufficient for most of the work I do, which is mostly web development. Um, so I'm mostly using Docker to run either Node or Python or whatever uh, with some databases and Redis um, and I'm quite sure that this laptop can handle all of those just fine. Uh, it's just the ability to run them um, before you can do that, but with Linux containers now, uh, you can do that without actually putting the machine in developer mode. Um, so what's the first thing that you need in order to um, get Linux containers? Well, Linux containers are only available on certain machines right now, and Pixelbook is one of them. Um, also, you need to have Chrome 69 and above. So if you visit this cross-updates serving website where they've listed all the machines, so on my particular machine, I'm on EVE. Um, currently, I'm using the beta channel for 69.03. Um, for some reason, uh, we just got this last week, uh, even though 69 was out. And as you can see, even stable versions have 69 on some machines already. Um, so, but this should get promoted to um, stable soon. And beta is pretty stable on Chrome OS, so I'm, I'm not too worried about this. So, uh, for those wondering, um, you can go into about Chrome OS and um, detail bill information and you can change your channel from here um, effectively uh, stable and beta are both good options um, if you need to switch to beta for any reason um, once you have the 69.03 update you now have to enable crustini so you have to essential essentially open the flags page and search for Crustini and enable this. Um, so it's going to be on default. You want to have this enabled and that will effectively uh, give you access to the Crustini container, the Crush terminal. And I you just have to press Control T and this will give you the Crush terminal. Um, you'll start with uh, this command, VMC start terminal. It's not terminal, which is what I initially used. Um, that will effectively start the uh, the terminal, the terminal, uh, effectively. Um, and this effectively brings this option in settings for Linux containers. And over here in Linux beta, you can turn it on. So I've already turned it on to so just ask me to remove it. Um, so once you do turn it on, it's going to open up a new window, which will just, you'll have to just click on continue and will uh, download and install Linux containers. And once done, it's going to bring up your terminal uh, on screen. So uh, this is essentially a Debian stretch terminal that's linked to your hard drive. Um, so you can basically install um, most of the Linux apps on here. Um, it still doesn't have volume and graphic support, but uh, for a developer, it doesn't really make uh, too much of a difference. Um, obviously, the first thing, as soon as you come in, you'll start um, installing your development tools, get SSH, whatnot. Um, and once you've uh, configured all of that, then you can start installing whatever platform specific things you want. Um, one of the things that's obviously very important is VS Code. Um, 
as you probably already noticed, I have that installed over here. And um, VS Code was very easy to install. Uh, you can find the guides for that linked in the video below in the description. And uh, essentially just downloading the, the Debian package and just running one command and that will launch this video. Sorry, that will launch the app. Um, and then you can just pin the app in your sidebar over here. Um, obviously, um, there has been, there are quite a few apps that you'd want to use, um, like 1Password or Evernote, as you can see here. Um, all of these are actually being used via the Play Store. So I've just gone and installed their Android apps and they're working fine. So that works well. Um, And pretty much everything else just works fine. Um, for me, uh, I had this one other requirement. And as, as I mentioned before, I run everything on Docker. So I had to install Docker, which I did using the official Debian installation. And I ended up installing uh, Docker 17.09. This is a slightly older version um, because I was running into a few problems. Uh, but even after installing this, uh, I have I still have a few problems here. Um, effectively, whenever I boot my laptop, I have to go and run a specific command. Um, I, again, I've linked all of the commands in the description uh, effectively. But besides that, it works just fine. I have um, I've used Docker and Docker Compose to spin up several containers for with databases and um, Redis and everything else, and um, it's all worked fine on on this laptop. So in this particular case, I'm actually running a um, a, a Node.js um, image, which is uh, running my Angular app. So if I just do Docker compose up. Um, you can see it boots up fairly fast and it's not too slow. It's, it's going to run the build over here in a few seconds. Um, one other thing that I ran into a problem was networking. So um, you probably noticed that my ng serve has a, a different port 8080 and a different host as well. And this is essentially how um, Docker links to my app uh, in uh, in Linux. So there are certain ports that are forwarded uh, by default. So I could have just used 4200 as well, and that would have worked. Um, and but I do need to change the host so that it can it can submit on all the hosts here. So I've got this weird problem where if I go onto localhost 8080. And wait for it. It just says site cannot be reached. Um, and this is like a, a weird issue. If I boot and I run it the first time, it works fine, but later on it doesn't. Um, so I have to come up here and I have to I have to copy off this IP and use that instead. And that kind of makes it work. Um, so, um, but that's pretty much it. I mean, other than that, it's been working fine. Um, it's given me issues with this particular container when I ran my project before. It was running fine on localhost, um, but it's not perfect. Uh, however, I think these are small issues and they should get resolved pretty, pretty soon. And um, other than that, I think, um, Chrome, Chrome OS has, uh, is really nice. And my primary machine is a MacBook Pro 15 inch um, with 16 GB RAM and i7. So I'm particular about performance and using it. So the only thing that just doesn't work as good on this machine is the screen size. The screen size is just, um, I think this is 12 inches. Um, if I'm not wrong, um, effectively, uh, that is the thing that just needs getting used to. 
But other than that, uh, I've been using it so far and so far so good. I'll be trying to use this as kind of my primary machine over the next few weeks and I'll update you guys on how that goes. Thank you.